and welcome to another edition of my Become Unstoppable series. And as always, I have an amazing guest for you today, so I'm super excited to get started. So those who don't know me, I'm Julie Fitzpatrick and I'm the founder of Millicide Therapy and Coaching. And my passion is supporting all you beautiful men and women out there to unleash the power of who you really are and become unstoppable. So without any further ado, I am going to see if the internet and Instagram gods are with us today. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes, so excited. How are you? Hey! Hey! Well done. Well done. Good to see you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you, Julie. Good to see you too as oh, well. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming in. And I've been telling everyone that you're very handsome, oh, you're dear. very funny. So, you know, like, no pressure, no. okay? No, no pressure. No. <laughs> Thanks. So, Andrew. Oh. Would you like to introduce yourself and let all our wonderful listeners and watchers, I don't know what the terminology is, um, and let them know who you are and what it is you do? Hi, well, um, I'm Andrew E. Pierce. I'm a singer-songwriter and currently recording my album, Ooh. but also vocal coaching as well. That's what I'm currently doing at the moment. Amazing. Yeah. You're a man of many, many talents, aren't you? You've got to try having <laughs> Julie, you've got to try. You've got to try. <laughs> you've got to try, love. Got... Well, I seem to be very wonky today. I can't seem to get myself straight. Okay. So, obviously, Andrew, as you know, before we get into the conversation, yeah. I would like, and so would all our wonderful viewers, love to know what does being unstoppable mean to you? Wow, that's a question. Um, unstoppable to me means overcoming obstacles, being focused and believing in yourself that you can achieve things if you just be consistent mm -hmm. and put your mind to it but mainly overcoming obstacles and believing in yourself that's what it means to me mm. yeah me too overcoming life's challenges yeah. pushing through them but i think really importantly it's about learning from it all as well isn't it and taking on board the good the bad and using that yeah. to actually drive you forward yeah i mean you can't predict what life is going to throw at you no. and positive or negative we don't know do we life we, is we do not no. we do not no. and what what i love about doing these instagram lives now is i've you know i've always got lovely guests on here but i've also got guests who are actually <laughs> asking if their friends and people that i know can come on so we've got Juana to thank for you being introduced to me. Yes, um, I'd like to thank you so much for introducing myself to Julie. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel like she's my agent because she's found me a few now, so that's quite good. But it's interesting because the Become Unstoppable series is getting a little bit of a name for itself. So who knows, one day you can say, I was on Julie's Instagram Live I'm when Julie. I'm rich and famous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. When I picked up my own or something like yeah. that, you know. Um, but anyway, Andrew, so we know what you do now. Yeah. Uh, so what I always like to know and what I find really interesting is how did you end up doing what you're doing? You know, what would be your overview, if you like, of your story? What, what your ups and downs that have made you unstoppable? Because remember, I don't allow anyone on here. Oh. Who isn't truly unstoppable so and i already know you are because i've spoken to you before yeah. so where would you like to start i'll start with the fact that it's taken me a while to realize i am unstoppable and how to become unstoppable um my history was brought up in the church brought up a christian in the church um singing always singing always involved in music growing up in the church getting more popularity with vocals and then um, be very fortunate enough to be approached by a record label. First, it was an independent record label um, here in sunny Birmingham. <laughs> and that lasted for about two years, which gave me the great opportunity to travel, see the world, record abroad in Switzerland, Germany, all over the world, USA. And then I was even more blessed enough to get a major record deal 
with um, Universal Polydor Records, Wildcard. And that's where it all started, really. That's where my music career really started, and my love for vocals and singing. Wow. I mean, that, that's quite impressive on its own, isn't it? So where, where did that take you then? How kind of famous, how, how rich, I don't know, how, how did that take you in that grand scheme of things? Um, I wasn't rich, that's for sure. <laughs> yet, not yet, anyway. But the thing was, um, it took me mainly to... I lived in London for quite a long time. Then I, then I, I travelled around, for example, Switzerland, Germany, Holland, a lot around Europe recording songs. Now, I had a record deal that they don't really do anymore, which was a development deal. So for the first four or five years of that development deal, I was just recording, developing my style, developing my brand, and that was something is absolutely priceless to have because you can spend time, you know, financially you're sorted because they look after you. Right. And that was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that's really where it took me. Mm -hmm. um, and it helped me develop my brand. That's it, really. So what happened then, then, once that was all up and running? And right. What, what right. Are, you, are you ready for this, Julie? Are you ready for this? That's when things changed a lot. Um, I had a feeling you might yeah. say that. <laughs> Here's the unstoppable part. This way it began. It was um, whilst I was recording for, for my album, and I was with a band called Love Field. I was the lead singer in that band. And um, my manager, my, my music manager, spotted something on my neck as I was doing the video, as I would turn, he spotted something. And I wasn't aware it was there, but it was a lump. So I think subconsciously he knew what it was, mm. but he didn't want to worry me or scare me. So he just told me the minute I get back to the UK, I need to visit doctors. And lo and behold, um, it turned out to be a cancerous tumour. It was a lymphoma, it was leukaemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So that was right in the middle of my career, right in the middle of me having some of the best times of my life. I got hit with cancer. Wow. Um, the record label were fantastic. They supported me through it. I recorded through it. I still carried on, didn't stop. Took periods off for operations and surgery and chemotherapy and whatever else, but I still continued. And that's when things changed dramatically at that point with my health. Okay. So what happened then? So things changed? Yeah, it affected my, it affected my vocals because I don't know if any of the listeners have gone through um, cancer or having any kind of treatment, but it does weaken the immune system, as you know. But I didn't realise it affected my voice, particularly the high, the falsetto range. So I couldn't do what I wanted to do vocally. Now I'm coming from a Pentecostal gospel background. So the big voice, the big vocals, mm. but I just couldn't do it, just couldn't do it. So um, it affected me because um, I couldn't be the person I wanted to be. I couldn't be the artist I wanted to be. Mm. Subsequently, after releasing the album, we did release the album, the record deal came to an abrupt end. And that was after 10 years of being with this record label and releasing the album. So that was a shock for a, a young 26-year-old, 26-year-old, 26 at the time. It was really a big shock to my mental health. I love it. Oh, yeah. So there you were, getting over illness. Yeah. You know, serious illness. Yeah. Slightly paranoid that it may come back. Yeah. Was, yeah, of course. Yeah. And then you spent all that time nurturing that relationship, nurturing your career for it just to be overnight just taken away from you. And it was li literally, yes, it was literally overnight. In fact, it was over an afternoon. I got the phone call to say, this record deal is void. That's it. End. And so that's did, they, did they ever say why? Or was it just one? I suppose they don't have to, do they? They don't have to, I have no idea why. I think there were other complications going on that I wasn't aware of behind the mm. scenes. Mm. Because wow. I, myself, did produce what they asked me to produce, which was the album. Mm. Um, it's out there, by the way, it's still out there, it's been released, you can still buy that on, and listen to it on streaming on YouTube or- Drop the name uh, in, love. feel free to drop the name in. Should I drop the name yeah. in? It's, it's called 
Field Vivid. Love Field Vivid is the name of the album. Um, myself and Norma Levine worked on that. Um, but I've no idea up to this day. And I think that was one of the things that caused a lot of um, uncertainty. Yeah. Because you never, you never quite knew why it ended. Mm. But the industry is brutal. I mean, there are thousands of artists and mm. musicians that are signed to record labels and they don't even last this long. And I, I was 10 years. I was very blessed to have 10 years. Mm. So for that. But like you say, though, your mental health side of it would have knocked you for six because you're actually kind of, you're, you're grieving now, right? So you all, you were grieving for your old life, your voice, grieving for your voice because yes. that's gone. Yeah. Grieving for the career that you always wanted to and was destined to do. That, and then yeah. there you were. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's all I knew from the age of 18. That's all I had done from mm -hmm. 18. 26, so I did my A-levels, because um, I'm quite clever as well, believe it or not. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did A-levels, finished my A-levels, and then I was straight to music. And that's mm. So for that to end in my mid-twenties was quite a big thing. Yeah. Um, I had good friends around me, I had family around me, so that was really helpful. But it did take a toll in ways I hadn't realised until much later on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So do you, do you think that at the time you kind of really released it, like released the feelings and emotions from your body, or do you feel that you probably kept it stored inside? I think a lot of it I kept inside. Mm. I, I, I'm the type of person that will soldier on, mm. you know. I left music, when that ended, sorry, um, I went into teaching. I, I mm -hmm. had English and did a postgrad in it. So I went into teaching for quite a few years. So I thought, right, this part of my life is over. Let's um, compartmentalize it mm. and let's move on and have a new career. And I did enjoy teaching, but my passion without a doubt has always been for music and performing mm. and giving a message of hope, healing. My faith has a big part to play in that as well. Yeah. So yeah. I suppose I did. I did. So in terms of the, like the releasing and, and feeling, because this is you're not unusual in this, right? We're most of us, unless we're kind of blessed with knowing about this stuff. And, and if I'm honest, I'm only just finding out it now in the last couple of years when I've kind of changed my career and learning all about the mind, learning all about you know the psychological, physical conditions. And this what I'm I'm learning and, and have worked with clients as well with physical conditions. Yeah, because. If we don't release, yeah. if we don't release the feelings and emotions, then we're going to store yeah. them, and we store them in our body either as psychological or physical or both. If you're unlucky, yeah, without, and, without. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. But, yeah, fix. It says fix our cameras. Fix your mind too. Is that yeah. better? That's fine. I think I, I feel like I'm a bit wonky today. I don't know why. You seem. You seem. You look on this side. You look. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, where were we? Yeah, you were saying that we can bottle things in. And mm -hmm. there's a scripture that I can think of in the Bible that talks about, it says, cast your cares on God because he cares for you. I don't think we're meant to hold things in. No, we're, we're not meant to hold all these right. and traumas in. We are meant to find a way to release them because mm -hmm. I think it can cause psychological, emotional, <laughs> physical harm. Absolutely, 100%. You know, and, and different physical conditions are as a result of our stress of our overwhelm and holding holding trauma in our body yeah. and it's so important to release it but most of us don't know how to do that and that's how i work with my clients now right. it's not just dealing with the psychological side of things which i do and get an amazing result from it but it, i can also do that with some physical conditions as well because it is it's the same once you once you understand it and know where it's come from and we so we identify it basically remove it yeah um and then you can sort of like free yourself from a lot of this you know a lot of these um physical and psychological obviously conditions yeah but just as a final buy so okay so let's get back to your career then so now you're a teacher yes in, in did you say it was in english yes um i i was a teacher 
because what happened during lockdown was I had a major rethink because of other health issues um, about where I want to be in a few years and I'm no longer teaching at the moment and that was 19 years of teaching 19 years yeah but um, I was teaching I still love um, work with children mind you and I think I would eventually do that at some point again yeah so where are you right now then where I mean I'm you, in terms of your voice right has that all come back Harry should yeah. be Yay! The voice is back. <laughs> Healthy. Yeah, I know. Looking after myself, being thankful, being gratitude. I'm in such a place of gratitude at the moment. The voice is back. It's better than ever, Julie. It's better than ever. I'm in the studio trying to record. I'm still going through some health issues, which I'm dealing with, and which means I can't do as much as I'd like to at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I can write. I can write from home, and I think my lyric writing, songwriting, is just so much more profound and impactful and poignant now because I've lived the experiences. I've, I've lived the highs in LA, on Venice Beach, or in Switzerland. In I know. Look at me, eh? Look at me, eh? <laughs> I've lived the lows. I've, I've, I've come to the lows. You know, I've had health issues. I've had. Uh, death in my family, I've had quite, a, quite serious things, you know, mm. lost my parents, both have gone, which is so sad. Um, but it's, as you said, it's about being unstoppable. And where I am now, I'm at the point where I believe, and I've got faith that I'm on the up again. I've released some singles, and I'm hoping that it will take me to more heights, to more heights. What, what would you say your true visions are now then? Your, if you could, you know, have anything you wanted and this was a magic wand, what would, you, what would you wish for to the universe right now? Right. This is what I wish for to God. This is simple. And a lot of it's happening already. I'm actually completing my album. I want to release the album. My album is all about sending out positive vibes my music is about helping people to heal mm -hmm. to tap that side of them and just to be aware that there is hope no matter how dark things get there is hope um you may not feel it you may not see it but you've got our faith in this hope and i'm a living testimony of that that mm -hmm. you can come out the other end i'm not saying there's not going to be problems or obstacles um, but you can be victorious, mm. and that's my and Car Carol's saying here awesomely inspired lyrics, which Andrew is blessed with. Oh, hi, Carol. Who's Carol? <laughs> hi, glad you could drop in. I hope I'm making you proud, Carol. I'm sure you are, my darling. I'm sure you are. I, I, I don't always speak out on what's coming up in the comments because I lose, I lose concentration. So if anyone does put a comment and I ignore you, it's not me being rude, it's just that I'm. I, I can't multitask. We pretend we can, but we can't. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll be going, oh my God, what did he just say? What, how, do, how do I need to respond? Because <laughs> I'm too busy tapping away. Yeah. But you know, and I, and I've done the same thing now. I've put myself right off. Yeah. But well, I, think, yeah. <laughs> I think what's important in all of this is that when you have on multiple times had almost doors closed, in your face literally whether it be your health whether it be recording deals you know you've always come back haven't you you've always come back and would you say you've come back stronger oh yes julie yeah. i sound like the church advert now don't it oh yes yes oh, I, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah i did then sorry i'm sorry i have come back strong and i've come back with a sense of humor i've come back hopeful i've come back knowing that things will work out for my good mm. Is there anything in your life then that you, you, if you could change, is there anything you would change or do you think you would be okay with what's happened? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Questions. Um, I think if, if we were all honest, we wouldn't want to have gone through hard times. I mean, who does want to go through hard times? And whether it be illness or mental illness or issues, financial issues, whatever it may be. However, I'm a firm believer in that sometimes we have to go through these difficult times and trials 
in order to become who we are today. And I'm a firm believer that I would not be so determined and unstoppable <laughs> if I had not been through what I've been through. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's very key, isn't it? Um, it's about the experiences that we go through yeah. that does make us who we are. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of going through a bit of a funny, funny kind of phase in my life right now as well. Not, not funny, ha ha, but because December last year was when I quit my corporate life for 35 years to be 100% focused on my therapy and coaching business. Move, big move. Big move, right? Yeah. Big responsibilities, yeah. big, you know, you know, having to financially support myself from doing something I love, which, as you can probably vouch for, that isn't always as easy to do is it i'm not saying we can't do it we will do yeah. it and i i know i'm going to be hugely i am hugely successful but i'm going to be even more successful going forward right but i would say i've gone through quite a lot of change in this last year yeah because i'm doing something completely different i'm not in that caught up in that corporate world where it's do 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 i'm a robot i'm a robot get up eat sleep shit repeat it's you know yeah whereas don't get me wrong well, i'm still very very dewy and i've got lots because when you're a, you become a business owner there's all these roles everything. That you, you know, everything. Like, i never even knew i needed to be yeah never never known you know whether i could do them or not yeah so it, it's busy in that sense but i'm also continuing with my therapy training so in my therapy training rise and shine academy with frida from bertie who i adore yeah. and tomorrow i'm off to spend a couple of days with them and some of my other fabulous people in the group Excellent. um but we 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 i've been learning how to embody myself because i was i kind of did some work on myself before to get in the position where i am now where i uncovered my limited beliefs which i wasn't good enough right which meant that i lacked confidence now i never came across that i didn't have confidence but it yeah. did keep me small in my life and kept me average and all that kind of stuff right until i uncovered that a couple of years yeah. ago yeah. then that's when i truly become unstoppable right because i then felt more confident i put myself out there i mean i would never be doing these for a start you know i won an award i've been in a book i'm writing another book although i haven't done much anyway. but um and going through a whole whole transition yeah. and then of course i lost my beautiful lufa in may which flattens me and yesterday would have been his birthday so that flat yesterday i was a complete basket case but <clears throat> with all of that it's been teaching me so much i've learned so much about myself in this last yeah. year and working more and more with my clients because obviously i can service more people now whereas when i was working full time i could only do a little bit here and there yeah but now i, I can embody the whole thing and embody this life that i've chosen and i absolutely love it but i've been looking at my niche and who's who's my target audience and all that kind of stuff Who your actually, tribe? who's your tribe yeah tribe. who's my tribe and yeah. i've kind of been round and gone round a few circles but what i'm realizing now is they have to kind of be they have to be people that resonate with me so all my, my avatar if you like pretty much has to be me because yeah. what you know people want to see if you know i was like you this is what i did this is how i become unstoppable this is what i'm doing now this is the life that i'm living yeah. and it's about kind of but it takes a while doesn't it it's all and all my life experiences I'm yep. trying to weed through them and going, okay, how did I end up doing this? What am I doing this for? What's my why? And and it's really good to do that because it it jolts us into yeah. thinking about things again, doesn't and it? And I think a lot of what you're doing is you're working in your purpose right now. Mm. And it does take a while to get to that point. Yeah. And it's never linear either. It's not just one straight line. It's not. You're Downs and you might you feel like you go back a bit then you move forward a leap but it's mm. linear but i think it's it's so important and why does it take me so long to realize it i don't know but this is meant to be but it's so important that you work within your purpose we've all got things we need to achieve and things that are mm. innate to mm. us in our, in our souls and we've got to do the best we can in some way to follow mm. purpose and vision i mean absolutely it, and I'm really sorry to hear about your loss. Um, I didn't realise you had a loss. I'm really sorry to hear about that. And then, um, 
respect your strengths. I really do. I really do. Um, mm. You were saying you were saying you lost confidence with me. It wasn't confidence. I've always been confident because I can stand on a stage and perform for the thousands. With me, it was self-esteem. Mm. With all the you know the hiccups and hardships and difficulties and comments that people may have made in the past, planted that seed of um, lacking self-esteem. And that's what I had to grow with. I had to return back to learning how to love myself. Mm. I don't mean love myself, but I just mean love myself. Love myself. I just mean learning to know what I have, the strengths I have, the God in me. And that's where I've come through the other end. And that's what mm. I've had to struggle with and work with. But I'm coming out the other end and I'm getting yep. there. So yeah, same as same as me, and yeah. I think that's what's lovely for people to see and hear as well, isn't it? That of course we we all go through our own troubles, our own traumas. Yeah. But it's about how we come out of it at the other end. Yes. But but what I'm I'm learning in this whole journey of teaching my clients as well is it's it's about going back to basics though. It's about going back to looking after yourself. Yes. And it starts with you doesn't it you know the old analogy with the plane putting the mask on yeah it, that's such a good analogy i know that's not an analogy because it's what they do in real life but when you think about it in our personal yeah. lives i just think that is absolutely spot on and i use that all the time because it really does it 100 percent. if you don't look after yourself you can't be strong and look after everybody else can you you can't it's about self-care isn't it self-care and i I was thrown into it because I got very ill during COVID and I was on the high risk category. So I had to stay home. Mm -hmm. And that for me, however terrible COVID was, that one spark of um, hope or joy I got from that old period was I had to spend time with myself. Mm. I had to do a bit of delving and a bit of, honesty and you probably know more about this than me because of the role that you do i'll be coming mm -hmm. one day by the way for for, for some help <laughs> you're yeah. More welcome yeah um you have to do a lot of delving into yourself and realizing where your strengths are mm -hmm. where are the issues. and i had that period to really begin the process and that's when i wrote my first song nice called giving well mm -hmm. and it back off wow i'm starting to know who i am again I'm not just the teacher, I'm not just this, I'm not just that, but there's a whole spectrum mm. to me. But the yeah. core of it, you've got to know who you are, and that takes time. And I think that's an important point you make there, because it is about finding who we truly are. And, and I think so many of us, male or female, we spend our lives being this person that, we ended up being that person and we don't really know how we ended up being that person. But mm. then suddenly it, you're not really the person you, you want to be. And, and that was exactly what happened to me because I spent my whole life being like the breadwinner. I looked after everybody else. I had a good job. You know, yeah. I was earning good money. And then you get caught up in it, don't you? And you're on that treadmill that you can't get yeah. off. You get pulled along with life. You get you get pulled along before you know it. You're somewhere you didn't think you would be, or yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like you in COVID, and you know, not you know, hand, you know, who anyone who lost anyone and anything terrible happened. Yeah, obviously we're not belittling that experience no. at all because it, it was horrendous. Let's be honest. I mean, mental health wise, has gone through the roof, hasn't it? Absolutely, I lost However, friends. For me, it, I thought it was horrendous for me to start with because during that. Um, one of the lockdowns I, I got made redundant quite unexpectedly and I was like furious to start with right. for about five minutes and then <laughs> but that get that gave me my once I got over the panic of yeah. what am I gonna do it was like no this is what you're gonna do Julie you're gonna actually for the first time in your 50 odd years are gonna go and do something that you want to do for a change <laughs> so that's when I started to do it but I had to go back to work because Unfortunately, changing and transforming your life doesn't happen you've overnight. Got so, be, you've got to be realistic about it. And, and that change may be a gradual thing. It doesn't happen no. overnight. You need to work for a period of time before yeah. you switch. But um, mm. it's a gradual thing, isn't it? It is a gradual thing. But what I did do, though, was I changed my mindset around it. Mm. And 
although I was annoyed that I had to go back to work because I didn't really want to do that because yeah. I already I checked out of that life probably a couple of years prior to that with the old menopause as well you know like yeah. a bit fruit loopy but I'd already checked out but because I knew do you know what I've got my eye on something different now I've got myself an idea of who I want to be on well, I probably didn't know who I wanted to be, but I knew what I wanted to be doing because I did train as a counsellor years ago. So I always had that, you know, helping people thing in me, if you like. And I was always coaching everybody at work. I yeah. was running charity things. I was doing this. I was always the go-to person for the mental health things. And so I've always been that type of person, the carer, if you like. That's, been, um, that's your gift. Yeah. That's your gift. Yeah. That's, already, that's already been innately inside of you. Yeah. Definitely. It yeah. is actually. When I, funny enough, when I've done work on myself, one of those questions was like, you have to go back inside yourself really and find where that came from. And then you normally find that it, you've always been like that. Yeah. It, interestingly, Marissa Peer, who I did my rapid transformation therapy with, she's always said that there's four types. You've got a carer, the sick one, the, 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 the naughty one, if you like, and the perfect one. So if there's like four kids in the family, you can guarantee that they'll all have one of those roles. And those characters. Yeah. Diving. But I mean, I've got two sisters, but I definitely was the carer. Yeah. There was there was a naughty one in there, and then I'm not sure about the other one. But it, and you do you you take on these roles. You don't know you're taking them on, obviously, mm -hmm. but you you kind of end up doing that. And I, and I guess that was my role. And even in my family now, I'm like the one who, if there's a bit of a crisis, I'm the one who's in there going, all right, let's sort it out. Let's you know and. Is your Organizer as well, uh, which I was a project manager in my other life as well. Not surprisingly, but right. funny enough, I can't manage myself out of a paper bag. Oh, but, you can. You know. you, yeah, I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, but the point being, it's kind of I suppose we kind of have our des we're sort of destined to do things, but we have to make that conscious decision yeah. that we deserve to find our purpose and passion. We deserve to become unstoppable, yeah. and it is in our innate right, isn't it? Yeah. I think. And and there's a saying which one said to me once, and it's quite sad, really, because a lot of people don't step into their destiny and vision because of life. And for some people, it's it's understandable because things happen, and this life isn't easy. No. But said, where is the most valuable place on this planet? Where the most value lies? Where do you think that is? Any in, idea? In yourself? No. In the. <laughs> what was the answer? In a graveyard. <gasps> because there's so much people that have left this earth without fulfilling their potential. Cures for this. Professional medics. People with with minds, scientific minds. Oh wow. In the grave without ever tapping into their true potential and we are not going to be one of those are no we we're bloody not well we're all we've already superseded that anyway right yes we are we are, are already unstoppable yes but it, yeah. it's the other people in this world who don't feel that they are that we need to bring back up yes and that's part of my role i need to i need to help heal heal mm -hmm. people that's what i know how, I how do you feel that you heal people through through people listening to your music Dancing to your music, bit of both, or whatever means they feel most um, natural to do. For example, through my lyrics, the lyrics are quite healing. My mm. voice, I think my voice is blessed. I think I've got quite an anointed voice to sing, and I've always believed that. Um, if you feel to dance to my music, dance to my music, move to my music, just relax, meditate to the lyrics, whatever way it may be, that is my. That's the spirit I give out in my music. I love that's that. Passion. Yeah, and what and some of the things we do in our training is about learning different embodiment techniques. Yeah. yeah. And one of the most obvious one is dancing. Really. It raises your dopamine levels, but it's yeah. also a way of like releasing your body. So this is a top tip for anyone out there. If you're feeling like a little bit stressed and overwhelmed, right, go and take yourself. In a, in a room no one can see you if you want to but if you're happy for people to see you go for it find your favorite song find one of andrew's songs yeah hike it up and you just dance your socks off right and i can guarantee you will feel so much better afterwards because you've released it and getting the movement in your body yep. is 
so healing. Yes. I've been working with a friend of mine, Lucy, Lucy Blanco, and she specializes in that. Maybe you should yeah. introduce you to each other, actually. She yeah. does part of that. She talks about how movement can be so healing and therapeutic. Mm -hmm. well, there's so much we need to tap into, and which will help with well-being and help with our health, mm. definitely. Yeah. And this is the thing, rather than, you know, if we, were, if we were after a dopamine hit or something, you know, something like that, rather than go and do something unhealthy, like have a glass of wine, I, I'm not knocking that, I mean, I do like a glass of wine, but, but you know what I mean, rather than do something disruptive, like go and eat a cream cake when you probably don't really want it, but you just want yeah. that hit, yeah. right, go and dance instead. Yeah. Go and sing. Positive. Hey. Go and dance. Go and jump. Yeah. Go and do some exercise. Do something physical, Walk. and you're getting all of that in in your body. But you're also got the advantage of it. You're releasing yes out of your body as yeah. well. And that's what I. That's what I. That's what I get through singing. I get a, a massive release. Mm, love it. Performing and singing in my house. I apologise now to my neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great. I'm I've got great neighbours. I've got great neighbours. But yeah, that's my way of releasing as well. Yeah. And yeah. I sadly wasn't blessed with a singing voice. Oh. But you're blessed with other things. You've got <laughs> other gifting. Exactly. That's... We can't be good at everything, right? Yeah, we can't have everything. <laughs> I mean Yeah, singing isn't isn't my full day. I don't play any musical instruments either. Oh. I have tried when I was younger, but yeah, I, I, I... I mean, who knows? That was the old me. Who knows what the new me they, is? But yeah, singing isn't my thing. Doesn't mean I like trying, but okay. it's normally when there's no one around. <laughs> the YouTube site, I do some vocal tips on there. You never know. You, you might tap into something you never there. No, it, it might have matured. Might it? it might have matured over the years. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the inner Julie is coming out. But, I mean, um, the vocal. No, I, I, I do, on a serious note, though, mu music is such an amazing tool anyway isn't it whether you're listening to it doing it yourself playing an instrument you know i think it is an an amazing invention yeah. really it's something we all it's something that is so universal i mean there are there must be very very few people that don't like music in some form or some yeah. shape whether yeah. it's or actual music itself, or classic mm. gospel, or jazz. There's some people like some form of music, a mm. universal thing, and that's why I feel so gifted yeah. to be yeah. the gift of singing and to write. Mm. I love it. I love it, Julie. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and I have listened to a couple of your songs actually, and they're really, really beautiful. Thank you. And you have got a really lovely voice, and I would recommend everyone goes and checks you out. Actually, on that note, yeah. pardon the pun. Do you want to tell them how they can find you? Yes. Um, you can find me on Spotify, Andrew E. Pierce, or YouTube with the same name, Andrew E. Pierce, or Instagram. I've forgotten the exact. Uh, well, yeah, it's Andrew E. Pierce 9786. You are a star, Julie. <laughs> uh, and I'm on Twitter, which is Affirmation2. And I'm also on TikTok, which is I'm Andrew Pierce, Andrew E. Pierce on TikTok. I'm everywhere. I'm really getting um, techie and savvy. I'm getting there. Good, good, good. And what will happen, actually, Andrew Savvy, I will give you a recording of this as well, so you can go and do whatever you want to do with it. But it will go up on my YouTube channel in a few days as well. Perfect. And obviously, you'll be able to. We will. Up, I'll upload it into Instagram once we've once we've finished as well. So the whole interview will be there. But if you anyone wants to go over to Miller Side Therapy and Coaching on YouTube, you will find all my Become Unstoppable um, interviews. Plus, there's quite a few client testimonial interviews. So where my beautiful clients have come on and done an interview just like this, and I've got some short video clips as well that they've recorded for me um, about working with me and the results that they've achieved and I'm starting to put some educational stuff on there as well I've only had it a short while so I'm building it but I'd love you all to go over there please like and subscribe because I haven't got many subscribers currently um, just get it out there really and it's just another way to find them really really easily and I find that useful actually when I do get clients who want to come and work with me I just send them over there go and have a look at that and then yeah. it's all in one place yeah.
do subscribe people because I've checked it out and there's some amazing oh. testimonials there. Oh. So I am coming to you, Julie. Thank you. In the Darling, any time, my lovely, any time. So I guess we ought to kind of wrap that up now because oh. we're running out of time. But is there anything else you would like just to add before we go? Just, just to let people know that if I've got it in me to be unstoppable, then so have you. Just mm. uh, give yourself time, be kind to yourself, and be patient with yourself, and think positive things. Whatever is good, whatever is wholesome, mm. whatever is pure, think on these things and work your way up to being the people that you're called to be. And that's really it. Well, be unstoppable. I love, that. I love that. And I totally agree with everything you just said there. And it, it is about trusting yeah. where you are, because we can all get quite critical of, and I've done it myself, but, even the other day. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was getting really annoyed with myself that maybe if I'd stuck with my original niche, mm. I would be financially more secure, you know, and all this kind of, and it's like, no, because I've gone on a journey to be on a journey, and it will be what it will be. But what I've learned is I need to trust here, trust my heart, trust my intuition, yeah. Yeah. and trust that whether it be the universe god or whatever everyone wants to follow mm. that as long as you are true to yourself and you are loving yourself and putting out that high level vibration yeah. then that is what you're going to attract but unfortunately if we're on doom and gloom city then we are going to attract more doom and gloom unfortunately mm. that's just the way it goes right? raise vibrations raise yeah. vibrations think positively mm. and You'll, you'll attract that. That's that's kind of a law. That's kind of a law of life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they can start that by going and listening to some of your healing songs, can't they? Or uh, and or so go over to your, your your YouTube and then pop along to my YouTube. Yeah. Then they've got everything but, they need, right? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitive. Yeah. But um, anyway, my darling, thank you so much. It's been a complete joy having you on here, and maybe you can come back again. Maybe I should have. A, a few people all at once who have been on my yeah. series but please do refer me to any other people that you think are truly unstoppable oh, and that goes for anyone watching this as well if you've got a story or you know of someone who you think is truly unstoppable and you would like to see them on here then by all means contact me and we can see if we can make that happen definitely thank you so much julie it's been great oh brilliant i hope you've enjoyed it and we've had some thank yous on here as well so thank you all for watching and i'll see thank you next time with another amazing guest on my become unstoppable series thank you for watching love you all love bye you. bye, bye.